Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Monday. Over here in the Atlantic, the only feature of interest is former Tropical Storm Ophelia over here northeast of the Lesser Antilles, and she finally got downgraded yesterday after probably being unworthy of a name for 24 hours or so before that. She had a center that scooted off towards the west here and is now somewhere over here moving off in this direction and got separated from the main area of convection, which is now back here, and there is a mid-level center here, and then a new surface center trying to develop here and probably a couple of surface vortices underneath the convective ball as well. And we can see that with strong easterly trade winds to the north and a west-southwesterly flow to the south, there is still a conducive area for surface vorticity to generate in here and we could get this to reform again and a new center beneath this mid-level mess here, especially since this upper low which has been shearing her to the north of Hispaniola is starting to move a little bit out of the way which may relax this area just enough to get her back to a tropical cyclone, but it will take a little while and she is not a big threat here and eventually she should curve around this high and recurve out at some point, possibly fast enough to affect Bermuda up here and so they will need to watch for potential impacts from her, but she should not be that big of a storm in this area of the world as she recurves out. Philippe over here is also curving out. There's a nice broad deep trough over here that will curve him right out to sea like this and he is no threat to land either. Now if we turn our attention towards the Caribbean over here, if we do a little bit of review, I said uh, at the beginning of the month on September 3rd that by the time we got to this point, by the time we got to the 25th, the Caribbean would look very wet and the reality is that right now it doesn't look all that wet. Yeah, there's some thunderstorms down here, but it's really not that great looking. And the basis for that was that in combination with the pattern we were talking about over North America, the MJO would be back by this time. And the reality is that the MJO hasn't come back yet. If we look at the analysis position right now for yesterday, it's now out into octant number five over here. This corresponds to the Eastern Maritime Continent in the Western Pacific. This is not over here where it was four forecasted to be. So what happened is there was a hybrid of ideas from where the MJO forecasts were at the beginning of the month. The GFS was too fast taking it in here by this time. The European had the better idea at being slower, but it was wrong about it going all the way out here. So it was a hybrid of the European's idea and my idea that it would come back here for late September and October but the European was wrong on having it coming in here and the European was correct on having it be slower and now you can see the European really showing it coming back towards this direction in the 10 to 15 day period and once we finally get the MJO back I think the pattern I've been talking about for so long will finally come to fruition it sounds really bad to keep mentioning this when it keeps getting pushed forward in the timeline, but I can't ignore the pattern that's in place and playing out here. As soon as we get the factors finally lined up, it, I think it'll come to pass, but one has to be humbled by the long-range weather every once in a while, and this is one of those times where it's just, you know, the MJO is a little bit unpredictable, and it's just too much to ask to get it all perfect here, but I think things are going to start showing up. Now if we look at the 500 millibar analogs from the Climate Prediction Center, what this is, is this, is, this is the GFS 500 millibar heights and anomalies shown by red indicating above normal heights, blue indicating below normal heights, and then it takes, the, it uses the computer and computes analogs on the right here showing dates from the past that corresponded to a very similar pattern to what is shown here. This is for day 11. And if we look at some of these, there are a lot of dates that pop out to me. Notice right near the top here, 1996, October 18th. Guess what we had going on on that date? We had Hurricane Lily in the northwestern Caribbean before she moved across Cuba and into the Bahamas. This is one of those storms that I was mentioning in that package of storms that fell into this pattern a couple of weeks ago. And if we go back and look at the net going down, we have 1968. October 14th. Wonder what we had going on at that time. Hmm, Hurricane Gladys, also in the northwestern Caribbean, coming out and curving into Florida. If we go back here, we can look down and we see, ooh, 1995, October 8th. What did we have going on there? We had Hurricane Roxanne moved into the Yucatan as a major hurricane. And we'll go back one more time and we see down the list, 1961, October 24th. What did we have going on? We had major hurricane Hattie move into Belize as a major hurricane and you can see that all these storms are popping out now. And why do you think all these storms are showing up 
under this pattern that's forecasted by the GFS for 10 to 11 days? Well, it's because it's showing us the 500 millibar pattern here. If we go to the surface, you can see that for that time period, there's a lot of high pressure sitting over the eastern United States. This is the 1,020 millibar isobar that I just circled. So lots of high pressure over the east, which again is forcing air down into the Caribbean where convergence is, is happening. And if, the, if this pattern held true during the dates when those storms formed, which it did indeed, I went and checked, then that would make sense to have that pattern help generate a storm. And you can notice that we have four storms here. We have one that curves out to the northeast. We have two that curve out to the north and northeast. And then we have the other two that go west into Central America. And these are the two paths that I talked about that would be the main ones that are possible. If we get a storm developing in here, it's going to try to move like this or west in Central America, but not something in between. So this one is a no-no. We're probably going to have something like this or like this, depending on what the exact steering pattern is at the time of formation and where the formation occurs. So these tracks that are showing up in history are illustrating the ones that I've been talking about in this particular pattern. Now you might say, well, wait a minute, Levi, you showed the day 11 pattern and see this ridge over southeast Canada and the trough coming into the west. This looks like the opposite of what you were showing. You were talking about a trough in the east and a ridge over the central part of the country. And yes, I was. But notice what happened with the formation dates here. The dates that are shown here on the left, these storms all formed two to four days after the dates shown here or rather, sorry, excuse me, they formed two to four days before the dates shown here, implying that this is a pattern that was in place two to four days after storms formed here. If we look at what was going on two to four days before day 11, this is what we see. We see the ridge is farther back over the center of the country and see the, bl the blue showing up now over the eastern United States. There is that trough we were talking about, so that high pressure starts building in from the north behind the trough in the means. So that is the pattern that has been showing up. And then day 11 is simply the one where they show the analog date, show it, so I had to show that. But it shows what happens. The ridge moves over two to four days later because the pattern is progressive. And if the ridge is over here, it's probably going to move over here three to five days after that. So that's the natural progression of things. Now, look at the European showing the European ensemble mean 850 temperature anomaly six to 10 days out. Notice what we have here. Warm temperatures over the west and central part of the country cool all over the east United States. And boy, does this look familiar. Where is this from? Well, if you were, you've been watching for the last couple of weeks, you would have seen me throw up this map. These are the temperature anomalies across the United States on the dates of formation of storms in the Northwest Caribbean in the late season that tried to move north or northeastward towards the Bahamas, Cuba, Florida, or eastern Gulf of Mexico area. Notice the cool over the eastern United States and then warm out over the west. This looks a whole lot like this warm over the west, cold over the east. This looks a whole lot like this. The similarities are definitely there. So this pattern, you, you can't just ignore this pattern. It keeps getting pushed forward. And again, the humbling of the, t the timing of the long range pattern is difficult to forecast. So of course, I have to be a little bit humbled here by how difficult this has been. But the timing, despite being pushed forward, it's still showing up here. And I can't just ignore this pattern. And of course, another storm is now showing up on the long range GFS. So it's not like there's nothing there and there aren't any hints. So within the 10 to 15 day period, maybe even sooner than that, seven to 10 days out, we may see something starting to try to brew up in the Caribbean. So there's there's definitely things to watch for here. And I think during these, this first week of October, we will see something worth watching down in that area of the world. So we'll just have to continue to watch this pattern and see what happens. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.